Welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Thursday, September 27th, 2012. I'm Kristen Folletti. Google Chairman Eric Schmidt has spoken up about Apple, stating the iPhone maker should have continued to use Google's mapping application in iOS 6 instead of swapping it out for what he described as a poorly received homebrewed replacement. Can Apple and Google kiss and make up, or are both companies going to suffer because of the split? With us today to discuss the future navigation of Google and Apple is SiliconANGLE News Desk Editor Kristen Nicole. Welcome, Kristen. Good morning. So it's clear that Apple has wanted to bring spoken turn-by-turn navigation to its iOS system. However, that was never really part of the deal on Google's end. So was App Apple stuck in a position where its competitor was calling the shots? Um, they were really stuck in a position like that. Why didn't Apple see this coming from the beginning? Apple very well could have seen this coming. It's one of those things where they might have had all of the information necessary to make a particular decision and maybe didn't necessarily make the right one. So it'll be interesting to see if Apple can really pull off the maps on their own or if they need to kiss and make up with Google. So turn-by-turn -turn navigation was, you know, the big player here, but there was a number of other issues that really caused the rift between Google and Apple to expand. Can you talk about some of those issues? Well, the two companies have certainly been drifting into their own directions for a little while now, and Eric Schmidt in particular well, used to be on Apple's board and is now completely dedicated to Google, and his position at both companies became a conflict of interest. So uh, it seems that the back-end data, according to reports, the back-end data that Google was providing to Apple for those for the default map option on the iPhone uh, wasn't maybe meeting up to Google's requirements after a little while and of course Google put a lot of effort into aggregating all of that data to provide things like street views and turn by turn navigation and to not receive enough of the credit that also could have played a factor in this. Why did Apple rush to release a mapping product that it knew wasn't up to user expectations? That's a good question, and it, it brings up uh, the question of whether or not Steve Jobs would have let this happen to, to roll out a feature that maybe wasn't ready for prime time, and if Apple is really able to maintain the focus on, on quality that they once held relatively high standards for. But then again, a lot of the software releases that come through Apple aren't always ready for prime time. So I'm not entirely surprised that they've been having so many issues with the maps and Google's had so much more time to compile the data necessary to provide more accuracy when it comes to that. So now that Apple has suffered this mi mishap, it's really offering some opportunities up for other app makers. Can you talk a little bit about that? Certainly. Uh, every misstep is an opportunity for somebody. And when it comes to these two rivaling platforms, Apple has a very major platform. Google has a very major and prominent platform. And they also have their own interests to keep, keep in mind and stockholders to appease the whole nine yards. And it really leaves a lot of room in the middle for third parties, um, independent app developers. And there's one that has seen a very significant increase in traffic and growth, uh, an iPhone app called Embark that provides public transit um, information and, and um, navigation tools. And they've done very well since their iOS 6 update, which came out less than, uh, less than two weeks ago, of course. So it seems to be that Apple may have had a misstep here, but others are certainly benefiting from that gap. Well, Apple is obviously suffering a PR nightmare, but Google has also suffered a blow. Can you tell us how the breakup has negatively impacted them? Certainly. Google has millions of people on its own Android platform, but it also had millions of users on, on Apple's platform as well. And it's one of those examples of even though the two companies are, are battling each other for market share, uh, they also have similar and shared interests. And there's a lot of crossover with that, that user demographic. So they have seen a decrease in users, of course, with people not using their apps application. Um, probably as much as Google would like, and it will affect them in the long run if they can't find a way around it to get back on iOS as prominently as they once were. It's been reported that 100 million devices have been upgraded to the new iOS system, and so that means Google has lost those users. So does Google have any plans to try to get them back? 
I certainly hope so. Uh, similarly to how Apple kind of should have seen this coming, uh, Google probably should have seen this coming too. So uh, the question is raised whether or not they have some uh, a standard Maps app in the works that will come out. Uh, same goes for YouTube. Those were two defaults that are no longer default options on iOS 6. And uh, also word comes out this morning that uh, the mobile version of Google Maps will also soon feature the Street Views option. So it seems like they are trying to find the best way possible to still maintain a, a high presence on iOS 6. In a statement released by Google, they stated that their goal is to make Google Maps available to everyone who wants to use it, regardless of device, browser, or operating system. So does that mean that they eventually want to repair their relationship with Apple? It could mean that. These, uh, these companies are uh, really battling, out, battling it out on the, on the mobile playing field. And even though Microsoft may want the same things, their services and, and applications available on any device possible, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be best buddies with Apple or Google for that matter. So probably not. <laughs> I wanted to go back to something you mentioned earlier about an iOS app for Google Maps. Can you explain that to us a little bit more? Sure. It would be a standalone app. You'd go to the marketplace and, and download it, and it would it would be an extra step for the end user, but it a lot of the users on iOS 6 probably wouldn't mind taking that extra step. So the, the big question that is left here is whether or not Apple will approve it. Apple's been notorious for declining apps that compete with its own services, um, and e that goes for Google, too. What would it take for Apple and Google to come to an agreement on that? I think the consumer demand could eventually bring these companies together. We saw similar... Um, Things happening in, in the industry when it came to social media, everyone kind of had their own thing going on, and there were a lot of closed silos. Um, and finally, these social networks like, like Facebook and Google and, and Yahoo had to start to tear down those walls, open up that information, and, and, and let it flow a little bit better amongst applications. So if the consumers, if there's a need, I think that any two companies can, can find some middle ground and, and work something out. Well, we appreciate having you on today, Kristen. Thanks so much. Have a good one. And one more thing. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> For all the latest in-depth coverage and breaking analysis on tech innovation, keep up to date with News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV.